Hi, good evening, good day. My name is Sherry, and I would like to invite you to take just a few moments to listen to a summary of Chapter 1 in a book called Guinea Pigs by Dr. John Hall. I know your time is valuable, and I'm not going to waste it. I'd like to share this with you because I, it's uh, very interesting. There is need-to-know information, and I think you will benefit from it. So if you will allow me to have just a few moments of your time this evening, I will summarize Chapter 1, Non-Consensual Experimentation, in the book called Guinea Pigs by Dr. John Hall. So thank you in advance, and I appreciate your time. Um, please bear with me. This is uh, my first video. I'm not an expert, and... Um, I just believe that this is an important message, and um, I, I'm actually a little bit about me is I'm kind of a word nerd. I love books. I love the library. I spend a lot of time reading, uh, a lot of time reading nonfiction, uh, books that can help you, and um, and and they're helpful and they have great information. So I decided to utilize that time instead of just benefiting myself with this great information um, to summarize it and you know share it with others with you guys because I you will love this information you're gonna love this book so again I invite you to sit with me a few minutes while I summarize chapter one um, non-consensual experimentation in a book called guinea pigs by dr. John Hall all right thank you First off, uh, you're going to see me looking to my right a lot. I am. These are my notes, and I apologize. I'm trying to make a smooth video and and whatnot, but this is my first one, and uh, so bear with me. I'm looking at my notes. Um, okay, what I wanted to show you is a picture of the book, so you get an idea in case you want to purchase it or or go look for it at your library. It's a uh, Guinea Pigs by Dr. John Hall. This is what it looks like the cover. Wonderful, excellent book. Good information that you need to know. Uh, so, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. what we're going to do, this this chapter one, I'm going to do it in about 15 minutes or less, okay, just to get an idea. Um, the key points of this chapter, it's the beginning chapter, uh, is a little bit of the history on uh, guinea pigs. And, and this is talking about human guinea pigs being used for non-consensual experimentation. So uh, this first chapter covers the history um, going back to World War II and how prisoners of war POWs were used as human guinea pigs. Um, and uh, specifically in, in torture and, and then mind control experiments. And then how that uh, some of those same... Key players, I guess you would say, uh, from from that uh, from the war, uh, were brought over to uh, here, United States, and how some of those experiments were uh, continued, particularly the uh, mind control experiments. Uh, and I'll give you some examples from the book of. Uh, experiments that have done other experiments that have been done not just mind control so those are the three things excuse me those are the three things we're going to cover is the history of uh uh guinea pigs human guinea pigs the history uh, in world war ii the uh history of guinea pigs uh here in the u.s and specific examples of um guinea pigs experiments here in the u.s Okay, that's it. Just three points. We can get through this. You will appreciate this information after having heard it. All right, I'll be brief and I'll be direct. Let's start. Um, <laughs> apologize, my notes here. Oh boy. Okay. Well, um, okay, so this book is called Guinea Pigs, and it is written by a doctor. And he's talking about when humans are used non-consensually in experimentation, um, non-consensual testing on human guinea pigs. 
Uh, this book is powerful and uh, the technology and everything used really needs to be uh, understood, at least on a general level. So I'm just going to show you a picture. This uh, video might have, I'm going to have to use a few pictures for visual cues. Uh, you'll like it too. You just don't want to see me talking and see my face. So here is one little picture to kind of illustrate our point here. Uh, this is cover of a magazine. Not sure if it's an actual real cover. I, I think that it is or it could be a spoof. I, I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, you get the point. This is a woman in a gown in a guinea pig cage and with the little water bottle and everything that you see in regular guinea pig pages, except she's a human guinea pig. So illustrates our point. Guinea pigs. All right. Uh, so basically I'll start here. So the history on, uh, on guinea pigs, human non-consensual guinea pigs started for our purposes back in World War II, um, where the POWs were experimented on and tortured because that's usually what happens with POWs. It's sad, but it's true. That's what happens. Um, and from all sides. So it's not just to blame, you know, the Germans in World War II or this set of group of people or that set of group. It's humans tend to do that. I digress. Anywho. Um, so some of the ex uh, torture that was done was immersion and freezing water, uh, pressure chamber testing, forced seawater intake, uh, and invasive surgeries without anesthesia were done. And we're talking um, pretty painful, um, uh, intense surgeries like heart surgery or brain surgery and all without anesthesia, um, that was done. So, uh, and of course the, the one, the one thing that we're going to be focusing on that the doctor focuses on in the book, um, uh, because it's just so darn interesting is, a uh, behavioral modification, which is also known as mind control. Um, I want to show you a picture. It's not really a picture, I guess it's writing, but it illustrates the point. Behavioral modification is also equal to mind control. And then in parentheses or quotations, we have MK. Uh, the reason it's written as MK instead of MC is because uh, this program, again, was... Uh, it's the German K, so mind control, MK, okay? So behavioral modification is the same thing, equal to mind control. I'll explain why. Uh, the mind is a, is a wonderful thing, is it not? We all have one, our big, beautiful minds. You know, people talk, talk about, you know, our physical assets and, you know, um, you know, things we may own or, you know, this and that, but our brains are a wonderful thing. I digress. Another picture I'm going to show you. Um, this is, uh, we were talking about mind control is also, can also be called behavioral modification. The two words are really interchangeable. And the reason I say that is because if you take all the thoughts in your big, beautiful brain and all your emotions and your big beautiful brain, those, when they're played out and manifested, are actual behaviors, right? I'm, uh, let's think of an example. I feel happy, so I'm going to sing, okay? So um, feeling would be, feeling happy would be the emotion, and the behavior would be the singing, okay? So you can't have one without the other. <laughs> okay. I'm a little weird. If you if you didn't if you don't like that, you probably want to turn the channel now. I sorry. You know, just is what it is. But you're gonna learn a lot. Um, so yes, again, uh, behavioral modification is I'll show you one more time, just for emphasis. Behavioral modification also is equal to um, mind control because again thoughts and emotions control behavior so by controlling 
thoughts and emotions, you are in effect controlling the mind. Mind control, behavioral modification. Potato, potato. All right. Uh, so World War II, there's a little bit of the history of it, what, what they were doing over in where the war was. A lot of it was in Germany. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, okay, so um, also what a lot of people might not be aware of, and this is a little part of our history that sometimes we don't talk about, but um, it, you know, it, it can be researched and, and verified and whatnot, so it, it, it's important for this discussion. About after the war, some German Nazi soldiers were uh, sent here to the United States. Approximately, the book lists approximately 1,600. Um, a lot of those were, um, because of course in this book we're talking about mind control, so um, the 1,600 that we're referring to is speaking about medical personnel, some of them in particular. Uh, so things like doctors, um, physicists, scientists, etc etc uh you get the point yes you do because you guys are smart i know it's not a hard concept you can anybody can google it or ask anybody they should know many people will know not all but many i just want to give you a little picture a visual cue not that you don't know what medical personnel is but um all different kinds you know so when you think of medical personnel you know these are cartoon images <laughs> But, um, you know, you got doctors and and um, dentists and nurses and anesthesiologists, psychiatrists. Um, you got all that. So some of those uh, were sent over here from World War II. And uh, they started a program called Operation Paperclip with those um, people from Germany. Okay. Uh, so what happened was, thanks for bearing with me, I'm sorry, it's a lot of paper shuffling, and it's a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of stuff here going on. I apologize, I'm trying to take a lot of information and condense it for you, not give you too much, not give you, you know, not give you too little, so you get the point of the matter. Um, so yes, World War II, experimentation, mind control, they called it MK for the German K instead of the English C. So MK, when you hear MK, right, you know, um, think mind control. Uh, Operation Paperclip, where it was continued over here, because, uh, you know, in doing, in experimenting on people in World War II, the Germans, because uh, it was a world war, they gleaned a lot of information from uh, torturing and experimenting on people. <laughs> I, it, it's sad, and it's not right by any means. Uh, however, there was a lot of information gleaned from that, and the um, United States, being a world power, wanted access to that information. So, Operation Paperclip. The... Uh, the experiments were continued over here and a program named MK Ultra. So that's uh, that's pretty much what happened. Um, MK Ultra. It was also went under other names, pseudonyms, I guess you can say. Uh, I'm sorry, my notes here. Thank you for being so patient. I know you guys. I want to take a lot of your time. We got one more subject, okay? We talked about the history. Um, in you know in world war ii and then we talked about what was brought over here now we're going to get specifics and then we're done i'm going to give you some examples uh yeah oh and also too let's see oh i do want to mention this too as far as the german nazi soldiers many times they engaged in the use of psychiatry as a tool for control which also is a practice that has continued until today um they were into eugenics which is a form of selective breeding. I know you've heard of things like the Aryan race, which is um, people, blonde haired, blue eyed, kind of, I guess, a perfect person based upon a certain standard set by whoever was setting the standards. Not God himself. I digress. Anywho, you understand, eugenics, that's what that is. So, um, it, and also, so selective breeding and forced sterilization. Obviously, if they figured you didn't have the genetics that they wanted, you know, to be 
part of their perfect race, then you could be sterilized so that you wouldn't produce or, you know, produce <laughs> non-perfect people. Um, you know, people make mistakes. I digress. Uh, okay, so... It, let's see... Yeah, okay, so I have a list. There has been non-consensual testing done on human guinea pigs uh, over the years here in the United States. I'm just going to list some of them for you. The book has a complete list if you purchase the book. It's $7.99 on Kindle. And the book, if you order a hard copy, is you can get a used one for, I think, maybe $10, $15 or a brand new for like $20. And it ships pretty quick. So, And it's an easy read. Uh, surprisingly, he is a doctor and he's done tons of research, but he is able to put his research and all this great information and summarize it in very easy to read um, format. So and it, it won't take long to finish the whole book, maybe about four hours in total. So, you know, that's not saying you have to sit down and you know, do four hours all at one time. That's just saying it as a whole. So you could get through it depending on how much time you have to devote to it. It's interesting though. Once you get into it, you're not going to want to put it down. It's that interesting, you know, because it's mind control. We all have a mind, our big, beautiful brains. Uh, okay. So a list, I, I said I was going to uh, have a list and I, I do, I'll show it to you a little bit. I listed 13 examples. Not sure why I picked 13, but you know, that's, there was a lot there. Like I said, the complete list is in the book. So out of these 13 that I listed, though, I'm not going to sit here and name all 13. <laughs> um, I'll go through a few, maybe five or six or seven. Okay. So number one, from the year 1919 through 1922, there was testicular transplants um, experimentation done on 500 prisoners at San Quentin. That's testicular transplants. I don't mean to, I'm sorry, God forgive me. I don't mean to, I'm not laughing. I'm just, I never heard of such a thing, but apparently, you know, remember this is non-consensual testing. So you don't have the ability to say, you know, no, thank you. I really don't need a testicular transplant. Well, you're a guinea pig. You're going to get one, which is why this book is important. Uh, okay. So number two, in 1927, Carrie Buck was legally sterilized against her will in Charlottesville, Virginia, because of the eugenics law of that era. Her mother was mentally retarded, but she was not. So apparently maybe they didn't want that gene um, being passed down and uh, she was sterilized against her will. Uh, example number three. Dr. Cornelius Rhodes conducted cancer experiments on Puerto Rican subjects by injecting them with cancer cells. He also did radiation experiments. The American Association for Cancer Research honored him by naming an award after him. Of course, you all know about the Tuskegee experiments done from 1932 to 1972. U.S. Public Health Service and the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama tested syphilis bacteria on 400 poor black sharecroppers. They repeatedly refused treatment and experimentation ended only after a reporter brought it to light. That's four examples. Okay, the fifth one. In 1950, there was a Dr. Joseph Stokes from the University of Pennsylvania who deliberately infected 200 female prisoners with viral hepatitis. Uh, I, let's see, uh, another one. 1950 till 1972, uh, mentally disabled children at Willowbrook School in New York were deliberately infected with hepatitis in an attempt to find a vaccine. Uh, 1969, San Antonio contraceptive study conducted on 70 poor Hispanic women where half were given oral contraceptives and the other half a placebo without consent. Uh, that one would be difficult because uh, basically all the women thought they were getting birth control, not abortions, birth control, and they weren't some of them. So then maybe they were trying to be responsible and plan their pregnancies and not have children that they maybe were not financially or emotionally ready to have at that point in time for whatever reason. And um, they were told they were given contraceptives and they were not. So uh, again, non-consensual testing. And of course, this will be the last one from the year 1940 until today, the mind control experimentation 
began on the population under MK, remember, I'm not going to tell you what that means, MK. And the program was named MK Ultra, and it also had other pseudonyms, names, um, which has continued into current times. And currently, allegedly, rumoredly, the program still continues under the name. I want to show you my picture again just because I'm so proud of it. I know. It's not that. It, it's a cute picture, though. It's cute. See? This is a monarch. So Project Monarch for the butterfly. The monarch butterfly. There's more to it. Um why they named it Monarch, uh, which we can get into at a later time. But for this purpose of this video, to summarize chapter one of the book of guinea pigs, non-consensual experimentation, that, that's enough. Um, that's enough info on Monarch. That's the name of the program, allegedly, that, you know, the mind control MK Ultra was turned into Project Monarch, which is why we brought that up. All right. I think we're almost done here. That was pretty much all the information that I gleaned. From chapter one and I'm fuddling with my papers here I thank you for your patience on the first video so thank you guys make sure I covered everything yes yes we did you guys thank you so much for your time you were patient you learned a lot in that little brief moment uh, we've been 20 minutes at this and I don't want to take any more of your time. I want you to have a good night. Enjoy yourself or, you know, get ready for work tomorrow. And and stay smart. Stay strong. And join me maybe next time for a chapter, when I summarize chapter two on uh, the book Guinea Pigs by Dr. John Hall. And chapter two is going to be all about MK MKUltra, uh, more specifics of it, all, especially the technology. So if you're interested in, in how technology can uh, play a part, a big part in mind control, I invite you to join me on my next video and I will try to keep it um, short and simple like this one. So I appreciate your time. Have a good night. And oh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Stay smart, stay strong. God loves you. Thank you for listening to Sherry's Summaries. Have a good evening.